What's up, Facebook? What's up, YouTube? That's right, it's me, your favorite trucker, Bobby C., known on the CB radio all over this country as Catfish. And I'm going to give you my week one reaction of the AAF, the Alliance of American Football. Um, if you're coming in to this looking at week one without really looking at the background, you're going to think, man, man, I'm a little bit disappointed, you're going to say to yourself. But you got to remember, guys, uh, college football has spring practice. You know, with us Tennessee fans, we've got the orange and white game, and everybody's got their spring games. We've got all the practices throughout the summer uh, before we kick off our first game, and there's just a lot of gelling that goes on. The NFL has – uh, two a days and all these organized and unorganized practices and preseason games before they play their first regular season game. And the AAF didn't have that. You know, they just started gelling and practicing a little over a month ago. So when you think about it from that perspective, this first week wasn't that bad. It was actually pretty good because there's a lot of people that uh, – that think, oh, we got to come out of the gates with a lot of great product. But w when you don't have time to practice together, you're, you're going to have a lot of jitters. Uh, there were a few games that, you know, only the field goal kicker uh, scored a point. And then you got that uh, young ho coo. I believe he ki kicked the first field goal, scored the first points in the AAF. For those trivia nerds, you know, you may have to remember that name. That's a hard name to remember. But my overall reaction is I like the pace of the game. There's not a lot of commercials. I did get to watch one of the games, and that was the Arizona Salt Lake game. And I liked how they had the split screen uh, for the commercial, and you still got to watch what was going on on the field when they had the changes of possessions. There, there weren't any um, set TV commercial timeouts like you have in college and the NFL. Um, so I like that. I like the pace of the game. Now, I do think the pace of the game, uh, at least early in the season, is going to get a lot of these players um, who haven't been working out like they should some trouble. There were some in this uh, Arizona Salt Lake game that looked like they were cramping up, wasn't used to the pace of the game, and it's also going to um, not give the coordinators as much time to, to get in the best play. So I think that's going to affect some of the scoring. Uh, but I did like um, there wasn't a lot of targeting uh, penalties. It looked like more more real football. There was a couple of hits I saw uh, in, on some of the highlights. I said, man, in the NFL or college, they had to flag that. So I, you know, the purest in us that 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 uh, complain about these targetings and you can't hit anybody, you know, that it seems like. This AAF may be a little better in, in that regard. Now, they do tout their self as uh, being a lot safer. They don't have kickoffs like a regular game, which I don't know. I've been back and forth. When I first heard that, I, I said to myself, well, we don't really need to kick off. Uh, they say it's safer, but after watching that Arizona Salt Lake game, I think I kind of like to kick off. But anyway, it, it's growing on me. Um, but the overall feel of the game – was kind of like a uh, an average college football game. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with being week one. These players hadn't had time to gel. but And there's some few rules changes, which I've gone over in a previous video uh, before about some of the rules changes. But what intrigued me uh, as a Tennessee fan, and most of you that watch me are, are SEC college football fans, is the head ball coach. Steve Spurrier, he's always got that cheese-eating grin. Uh, he's always got a, a one-liner for Tennessee fans and Georgia fans. So um, we don't care about Steve Spurrier that much uh, if you're a Tennessee fan. So that was one of the things that intrigued me the most is they've got a lot of big names. You got New Heisel, Dennis Erickson. They were both coaching tonight's game. You got Mike Singletary. Um coach in Memphis, which he didn't do too good at San Francisco, but he was a great, great linebacker for the Chicago Bears. You got Tim Lewis, uh, 
for Birmingham. So there's some big names, and the people that started this, like Bill Polian, the great, great general manager that drafted um, Tennessee's own Peyton Manning, he's one of the co-founders. So, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, big names involved in this, and, and I think it's going to need that to get a push. It's never going to replace the NFL, but it's – I think the people that are going to be um, – most tuning into this is the people in the South, uh, the college football fanatics that, that like college football more than the NFL. They're the they're going to be the uh, I think the the fans that that probably gravitate this to this the most. Of course, Salt Lake City doesn't have an NFL team, so I, I think they're going to have a lot of great attendance. But let's go over the head ball coach. The first game. The Atlanta Legends versus the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier. I got to listen to this on the radio last night, Saturday evening. And I tell you what, AAF main offices, I doubt you're watching this Rinky Dink show, but your radio uh, announcers are horrible. That woman didn't even know the lingo. The guy that was his her color guy, um... Wasn't any better. Now, heck, I didn't even know which one was the play-by-play or the color guy. They kept stepping all over each other. I, I did not like the, the, the radio broadcast, but it's football. And we're already suffering from withdrawal one week removed from the Super Bowl. But I tell you what, I, I thought Aaron Murray was going to be the starting quarterback for Atlanta. But Tennessee quarterback Matt Sims um, – got the start for for Atlanta, and they just got took to the woodshed by Orlando. The, the ball coach hasn't lost his touch. He called up a bunch of good plays, and I think they're going to be the team to beat in the East. I guess it's the East. I still haven't learned what they're going to call these the divisions. If it, is it the East and the West, or if they got names for them, I don't know, but Every time you turn around, they were scoring points, and they were doing all these razzle-dazzle plays. So I think Apollos uh, are going to be the team to beat over in this uh, division with uh, Birmingham and Memphis and Atlanta. So uh, kudos to them. I, I, I'm interested to see these teams like Memphis and Atlanta that didn't start out too good what week two and week three is going to look like as they have more time to gel. Interested to see if Aaron Murray is going to end up getting the start. But um, great game for the first game. I was I was really getting into it. But I'm, I'm going to be pulling for uh, the Memphis Express. They took on the Birmingham Iron today. Um, Trent Richardson, great, great Alabama running back, had a couple of touchdowns in this game. Um but the Memphis didn't show up. They didn't even score a point. I believe they're the only team in the first week that got shut out. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I'm pulling for Memphis because it's an in-state game, uh, in-state team. Uh, there's six uh, former Vols on that team. Corey Vereen, Ray John Neal, Dallas Thomas. Uh, from the replays I saw, he... He, he needs some better conditioning. Of course, you got Pig, Howard, um, Colton Jumper, Justin Martin's playing for him. But I'm interested to see how um, Mike Singletary can get his boys going. And I'm going to be pulling for Memphis. That's my team. Big Vol Daddy's already wavering. He, he's told me he was all in on Memphis. And now he's saying Memphis ain't even in the state of Tennessee. He's thinking about uh, Arizona because his – favorite NFL team is Cardinals and uh, so I don't know I'm going to stick with Memphis all you guys I want to see in the comments what y'all thought about um, the Memphis Birmingham game um, Birmingham has a cool uniform probably the best uniform out of all of them I want to know what y'all think as far as the uniforms uh, BVD said he really liked the Birmingham uniform I looked it up online they look good I saw some of the highlights Kind of really plain, kind of like the Alabama Crimson Tide uniforms, just plain. But the Oakland, they look like the Oakland Raiders or something like that. But anyway, too bad for Memphis. Memphis, you need to get it in gear. I, I, I'm jumping on the bandwagon. Don't disappoint me. I've had 
a, a decade of disappointment for Tennessee football. I need y'all to do something for me, but I do have something to look forward to. That's this coming season for my Vols. Man, we had a great recruiting class, but I, this isn't a video for my Vols, even though mostly the Vols players are playing for Memphis. Um, but anyway, I tell you what, the game I watched has to be the game of the week. High scoring, uh, Arizona hot shots beat Salt Lake City 38-32. to And there, that Ross kid for, for Arizona, he's a great receiver. He had a couple of uh, one-handed catches, and they were really moving the ball. Kind of started out slow. Salt Lake City has a team. So it looks like the best teams are out there in the West. Uh, Salt Lake, Arizona, and uh, Orlando and Birmingham are really the only ones that scored over 25 points. So that's, that might be your championship, but it's all going to come down to coaching. The coaches that can take these guys and get them better. So I wouldn't take too much stock into what happened in week one. Don't start filling out your brackets uh, for Orlando making it to the championship or Memphis f finishing dead last. This is just week one. I'm excited about week two. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be all in this season, and I hope it keeps me my attention. We'll find out, and I'm going to be on here doing some live streams. I wanted to do a live stream of the Memphis-Birmingham game but i had some trouble getting uh the the live feed where i could uh watch the game but i've got it all figured out i figured it out after the game how to do it and i'm sorry guys i'm going to try to keep doing it and i'm going to be on that memphis bandwagon and i may stream some other games who knows but i want to know in the comment section what y'all thought about week number one um, and I want to know who your team is. Do you think your team's going to get better? Uh, if you're a Memphis fan, what do you think about how our Vols played? I didn't get to watch it, didn't get to listen to it because the AAF sucks. I couldn't get a – it wasn't on satellite radio. But anyway, if you want to watch more AAF reactions, I'm going to be doing that. So hit that subscribe button if you're new here and hit that – bell notification for those of you that are subscribed and aren't getting notified of my live shows hit that bell notification that's why you're not getting notified and those of you on facebook like and follow the volunteer road show and i appreciate everybody uh, following me so far this year and let's ride this aaf as long as we can and to get us some football it might be enough to tide us over to to preseason and summer ball for us college football fans so thanks for tuning in go memphis express you better get it you better get it in gear or you're gonna finish dead last i promise you that